Hello everyone and welcome back to Introduction to TS Assist. This is part two of our training series. If you're following along with the PowerPoint, I highly recommend that. It is available from TM Robotics. Simply send an email to info at tmrobotics.com to request a copy of the PowerPoint to follow along. In the second part of our video series, we're going to go through simulations, jogging the robot in simulations, and teaching points using the simulation tool. In our previous video, we had just saved the file and closed the file editor, which will bring us to this screen here. For the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to start the simulator. As a reminder, we selected the THE 400 robot with its standard controller for our robot in our project, and that's what's going to be loaded up here in the simulator. Once we're here, we're going to go to File Edit. And from File Edit, we're actually going to select our program that we created in the last video, File 1. And that will open up this file here. Now, with TS Assist, you have the ability to custom change these files uh, or the screen layout to kind of suit your needs. There is, however, some default layouts that we will utilize, especially when we're doing service and support over the phone or via email. These layouts are going to be very helpful. And someone may suggest, for example, to go to Layout 2 so that we're all looking at the same screen. For me personally, I like to use Layout 2, and then I typically will close the 3D tree that you see here. And this is the screen I typically operate from. To give you a quick orientation of what you're looking at here, there's a few different parts of the screen that I'd like to point out. We have the operation panel. We're going to get to this in a second. This is how we're going to be jogging the robot. We have our 3D view, which is going to give us a live view of the robot as far as what it is currently configured to be, as far as position. Then we have our program editor. In this case, because we have file one open, that is the program that is going to be displayed here. We have our position monitor where we're able to monitor the current position of the robot. We can monitor in either the joint, the world, or if we have it configured, the workspace as well. I'm going to leave that on joint for the time being. And then down below we have our coordinate data. Again, as I mentioned in the last video, if you're familiar with the previous programming software, TSPC, this would basically be our de-edit window. Now talking about jogging, there are a few different ways to jog the robot. We can jog the robot using the guide keys here, or we can guide and jog the robot using the 3D guide, which is a push-pull method. The guide keys here operate very similar to the teach pendant, the TP-1000. If you're familiar with that, you will know that on the TP-1000 teach pendant, you have some buttons located on the right-hand side in the white screen. This is our SCARA teach pendant, the six-axis. You have the slight variation, but you can see X, Y, Z, C, and T. That's joints 1, 2, 3, and 4. will correspond same as over here, 1, 2, 3, and 4. The LEDs across the top of the teach pendant correspond with the layout on top of the screen here. So in this case, for jogging the robot, we have we can do joint one. We can change the speed, go to medium speed. We can see joint two. We can go to a high speed. We can see joint three. And we can see joint four. You can see the rotation of joint four there. We can also go into our world coordinate space. And we can go in the X minus direction y plus, y minus, we can do rotation. We can also work in the tool space. You can see the arrow colors change here. So blue is going to be plus. There's our blue arrow there. We can go plus and minus. We can go plus and minus here, as well as our standard Z and rotation. The other method for jogging the robot is called 3D guide mode. And with this, you can push and pull using your mouse based on the tool center point, TCP. So in this case here, we can press and hold the mouse button and we could be dragging the robot with the green. And with the blue, we can do rotation. 
we can change the Z height, and we can now use this to actually teach the points in our program. So for example, I can come over here, I can highlight P1, and I can teach this as my point. It's going to ask if I'm sure. Yes, I am. The simulator will move the robot to that point to ensure the configuration can be maintained, and the point will be taught. We can then do the same for point two. We can bring that up over here. Let's go this way over here. Let's bring that down a little bit, do a little bit of rotation so we can see that. And we can teach point two. Are we sure we want to teach this? Yes, we are. The robot will swing around. We can see that. And we can go back to a home position, for example. Let's use the other guide uh, keys here. We'll go back to the guide keys. Go back to world, we'll keep it there. I can go X plus. Let's, uh, let's bring it in a little bit. And let's bring the Z right up to the top. And we'll teach that as our home position. Teach, are we sure? Yes. Now this time it didn't have to jog back to that position because we've already jogged through there. It's already moved the robot using the run commands internally which allows it to know that the position is safe. Of course, we can always manually enter data here. I can double click here and make that zero, for example. I can make this a clean 130, for example. And I can manually put numbers in here if we wanted to. For example. Now that we've taught our points, we can save our program. Just in case, and as a good habit, we can do a syntax check, make sure there's no problems there. And we're going to exit the file editor. That will have saved our points. That'll bring us back to the project folder. And what we can do from this point here is we can go to control panel. We can select the file, in this case, file one. This will bring the file up. With the control panel here, on this screen we have the control panel, our 3D view, our program. We can also monitor inputs. We can monitor outputs or other inputs, for example. We can monitor the teach pendant so we can see what's being printed or displayed to the teach pendant, as well as any error codes that might be generated. We can monitor all of that from this screen here in the simulator. Once we have our file selected, we can change our speed. For example, we're at 100%, let's go to 50%. We can change our mode. If we want it in continuous operation, so when it gets to the end statement, it will cycle back. Or you can do it in cycle, so you have to give the run command each time, for example. We'll leave it in continuous. And we can run our program. And here we can see our program running. We can see our outputs turning on and off. We can see our movement here. To stop the program, we can either use the stop button, which will complete the current move and stop. This requires the run command to carry on. We can give the break command, which will stop at mid move like a pause. Again, this will require the run to continue. Or we can do a feed hold, which is again like a pause, but it's more of a toggle. You press it once to stop and you press it again to continue. In the future, we'll have the ability to give the servo off command and stop the servo as much like you have on the controller. And that is how you would run a program in our new simulator on TS Assist. Stay tuned for the third part of this series where we talk about some of the geometry and drawing abilities as well as interfere checking with the robot. Thank you for tuning in.